Jim Gray asked him about his comments that you know we talked about a ton uh, on HBO, where he talked about you're going with that guy, uh, and he asked him more about it. And Jim asked him, "Do you want to clarify who you're talking about?" And uh, Tom's answer was, "The teams I'm talking about know who they are." And Jim Gray was like, they, they do? They know who they are? And Tom goes, yeah, they know who they are. They, they know who was interested. Everyone has the choice to choose. What you realize is there's not as many smart people as you think. It'd be a no-brainer to go get Wayne Gretzky, to go get Michael Jordan, but nah, we don't need him. We're good. That's what happened with Tom. So uh, the last part where I said that's what happened with Tom is not Tom's quote. But he said, nah, we don't need him. We're good, kind of making fun of the teams who kick the tires. And you remember when Brady's first comment on the barbershop came out, we were like, ah, who's he talking about? Is it Carr? Is it Jimmy? Is it Tannehill? Who's he talking about? Well, this is not him talking about a team. This is him talking about everybody that kicked the tires and moved forward with other plans, which we know the Niners did. So the point here, there's no debate now that 49ers are included in this comment. Do you agree, though, on the shop clip, the way he was talking to them, he was picking an individual, even though I think it represented everyone kind of turned him down. Yes, I think he had somebody in mind. I give Florio credit. Back when this played out, he kept saying, like, what is his market? And and it gets back to, I think, Tom going, how did all these teams with questionable quarterback situations, I'm fucking Tom Brady. Now, I completely understand where Tom's coming from because he is is 100% right. And this is how really just athletes in general you and i have been around just a lot of them not you, you don't even need to be around a hall of famer it could be a you know i'm not saying doug christie talks like you just whoever and you'd be like can you check that guy and hell yeah i checked that guy i've been checking it i checked his ass for a decade and that's how they communicate and these are just role players in the pros right or just solid players how do you think like john elway or dan marino talk when they're just like at the beach with a buddy having a course light <laughs> that guy fuck you see Josh Allen? Do you know what I would have done in the league right now? Like, I I don't – it's refreshing to hear him talk like this just because I would say him and Peyton. Rodgers, I think, has given us a little more insight over the years just because his personality, where those guys do kind of stick in the corporate lane, I guess, is a way to put it. Like, they just – it's not worth it for them to say something, and it becomes – Tom really has just let it all fly. I mean, I just don't think he gives a shit about anything. That's actually why I think him and Phil are such perfect partners whenever they play together. They both are kind of similar. Would you agree? Like, they just, at this point in time in their I watched so him. Rich. It's funny you say that. I watched that interview and thought, wait, is he getting some of this from Phil? That's what I felt like. Because he, like, looked directly into the camera. It was awkward. I'm like, I think he's getting some of this from Phil. That's what it felt like yeah. to me. Yeah, just let it go. You know... Uh, the one thing I would nitpick with him is it's not like Jordan, as it turns out, right? Michael had been retired for three years, came back to the Wizards at, what was he, 38, 39 years old? Someone else would have to educate me a little on Gretzky, how it ended with Gretzky. I think Gretzky was pretty good at the end, but Gretzky wasn't in his 40s. MJ most certainly was not 43. Michael came back, played for the Wizards, who he partly owned— right and they were under 500 both years they were thir- they won like 35 games so the league was right and now michael was averaging 22 don't get me wrong but the league was more wrong about tom than they were about mj now i don't know i don't quite remember could mj have just played for anybody or was he going to play for the wizards no matter what tom almost does himself a disservice here Obviously, with Michael, right, we're talking about the greatest athletes of all time. But Michael at the Michael's last few years, and who knows, maybe we're not watching Tom's last few years. I mean, the Bucks are getting a ring, their rings on Thursday night. It's Tom's seventh ring, John. Is it Tom's last ring? Or is Tom going to get an eighth ring? Like, I was thinking about that when I saw Tom tweet, like, getting our rings tonight. Well, is it his last ring? Might not be. Well, I saw, I, I saw Guerrero, you know, is, uh, yeah. Alex, no, no trainer has to like you see that clip a couple of weeks ago. It might have been like last week where he was throwing uh, the balls to his like kids or his nephew. Did you see the guy like in the middle of the field was Alex? Yeah, Alex goes everywhere. I know he was on Schefter's pod 
I didn't listen, but I saw the clip that Schefter posted. Like, yeah, I see him at least playing this year and next year. Like, he's got two more years minimum in him. Like, they are going to be in the mix for the championship these days. It's not inconceivable that he gets to eight, right? Nope. If you, if They're the you, favorites no this year. One, no one the would NFC. think you're weird to say that, that minimum they're in the NFC championship, hosting the NFC championship game right. this year. Gretzky, yeah, was his last year he was 38, but he was an all-star 36, 37 his last two of his last three years. But he was like stat wise looking, he was a shell of himself. Like in his peak, he was scoring like 70, 80 goals. Points. I heard some I heard someone's goals, points. No. Like, oh, in his peak, his, he was 70, 80 goals. Assists, yeah, his assists were outrageous. His his points, like he was over 200. I heard someone say Did he win when the Hart Trophy? Fantasy sport. How about the Pearson? Did he win the uh, Ross? Did he win the Bing? No, nothing late. He won the Bing. That's a good, good knowledge there. I'm, His last year winning the Bing was 94. But when fantasy sports, I think, became something in like early 80s, in baseball, hockey, basketball, football, Wayne Gretzky would come. Like you could only get like buy a Bitcoin, right? You don't have to buy the whole thing. You get a quarter of it. And you would get like you, you could buy fifty percent of Wayne's points because like he disrupted you, you the whole league. If somebody had him, wasn't fair. Yeah, that's pretty outrageous. I mean, that doesn't happen for the greatest quarterback of all time, right? It doesn't happen in really other sports now. Maybe Barry Bonds had a moment where he was probably on a different level, but he right, was hitting. Yeah, but he was on another league. level. But you could, if you were playing fantasy baseball, you could have a guy that hit fifty-five home runs and another guy that hit, you know, maybe not fifty-five, but you know. Yeah, actually. There were guys hitting, when yeah, he was hitting could. 70, yeah. guys were hitting 50. Yeah, so you could have made up Because 50 became the new, like, 37. Right. But I just, uh, that was my one thought with Tom. A, he's talking about everybody. He's talking about the night. He's talking about everybody. But B, he's selling himself as cocky as it is to hear him say that. You wouldn't do this to Michael. You wouldn't do it to Wayne, and I'm with you. I loved hearing him say it. Um, I think he's actually kind of selling himself a little short. He's ending better than those guys did. Uh, if this yeah. is the end, I don't know how far we are from the end, but well, there's still, you know, I mean, he's he's flirting more and more every year that goes on with the whole argument of father time. But if his arm keeps moving, he's never been predicated on moving around. So what really changes, right? If his arm stays 95 percent of what it's been, he's not predicated on running. So as long as he's healthy now, they claimed he had an MCL injury, which I or torn MCL as someone with a torn MCL. Like I you can't. I don't believe that. Maybe he dinged it up like late. They claimed he played the whole season with that. I, I'm going to call bullshit on that, like trying to add to the legend. But he is, a, I mean, he could get hurt. Like just, and I'm even talking like a broken leg. Right. But the question I think consistently. My question always, for Tom is if he did have a major injury, would he come back or would he just be done? Come back. That's pretty nuts. He'd come back. You tell me he tears ACL and he comes back. I don't think like, he'd go out like that. He's a maniac. Boy, isn't he? <laughs> Yeah, he is. He's uh, because I was listening to this golf podcast and they were asking, like, could Colin Morikawa win eight majors? This guy who covers golf is like, well, we say that a lot, like about every non Tiger. Right. And we say that about Rory. And now when you listen to Rory talk, it feels like he doesn't even like golf that much because your life just becomes this like business entity. And I think any guy in sports, once the huge money comes and I listen, I mean, on a lower level, like I think we feel it sometimes just doing this. Like once you become work in anything where you're generating money, it's no longer what it wasn't to you before the cash. And it's like Rory just became numb to it. All the money, just like a walking corporation. Like why Phil, Tiger, Tom, Michael, deep down, you could have paid him a dollar. You could have paid him a hundred million dollars. They were fucking addicted to the sport. Absolutely. Like, He's like, you know, Phil won the championship, the PGA championship this year. He's like, at the Masters, I was there, and it was like a dusk. It was like dusk. It was like 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock at Augusta. Might have been like 7.30, actually. And he's like, there's not a soul on the property. And I look out at the practice range in the chipping area, Phil by himself with like a doing this towel drill chipping over it. And he's like, this guy is an addict, <laughs> right? And, and Tom, the, over, and I think Peyton was like this, too. But his body just told, like, Payton did not want to quit. And remember, mm -hmm. there were reports after the season, like, he started reaching out to people and no one would touch. His like, arm was shot. Unless that happens to Tom, you're, you're probably right. Like, Tom ain't just 
tapping out. I think we always say this. There, there's a small percentage though of true addicts. I have Jameis. I admire. If we judge I you admire, by how weird your drills are, Jameis. I but I admire you so much. Like I'm talking true addicts. Once you make an astronomical amount of money, like I listen, I'm not a big LeBron guy. I do respect his work ethic for his craft. At this point in time, he's so rich and he works so hard. Like that's how do you do it? What are you doing it for? Yeah, I I um we we always say this though, John. What happens if Tom gets hurt? But what if he doesn't? Well, no, he does. he's been hurt once in twenty two years. He doesn't get hurt. Daniel on YouTube says you can play with that. I had two grade three ligament tears in the IDF. I don't know what that means. Uh, Israeli Defense Force. <laughs> I'd say there's a little more on the line. <laughs> I, I would imagine I if you had some like that. some IDFs, some SEALs, like what are the injuries you battled through? It's probably a little higher threshold than if you get asked like the casual corner, like, like yeah, I'm not, I'm not playing through a torn MCL, <laughs> you know, because that's you know, guaranteed cash, homie. <laughs> I don't think you get that uh, that option on a mission, you know, when uh, when something goes, no, you just you gotta, pa- you just gotta power get, through. Find your way back to the huddle. 